just to prove to you, this cinema is empty, right? Peanut! What is going on everyone? Dwan Bian here bringing you another video. This time I'm going to be reviewing Morbius. The good, the bad, the review. Alright, let's get started. Overall, the movie was okay and it was solid for what Sony, I guess, was trying to achieve. But action sequences were probably the film's high point. And the concept of this film, the origin story of this anti-hero. Unfortunately, that was pretty much as far as the movie goes with unique and interestingness. Because after that, the plot. It's pretty much standard. You know, you have... You know, you have a hero, you have a villain, you have the hero's love interest. That's as far as the movie goes. The antagonist of the film isn't revealed to about halfway through the movie, which I can't really say whether that's a bad or good thing, but to me it just felt like I just need it to get to the point, and it feels like it just dragged on a little bit. I've been sitting in my chair just waiting for the film to essentially get to the point. But in saying that, it was a short runtime, so I do also think that they can use a lot more of its runtime just to flesh out the characters a little bit more because some of the emotional moments of the movie felt a bit flat to me. But look, the movie doesn't really have much going for it. It's, there's nothing special about it. The science is pretty interesting. It's a new superhero, something that's unheard of. Who is this? People want to know who this character is. Overall, should you go watch it? That's a really, if you like. It's a pretty weak superhero movie compared to some others out there in the franchise. And it's probably not going to be worth the money of a premium cinema ticket. Let's talk about the story. Now, the story was messy, it was not 100% consistent with everything, but it was easy to kind of lose track a little bit on what's going on, but the only interesting part about the plot was probably the origin story, the blood condition, and mixed his DNA with a bat. And unbeknownst to him, his DNA morphed too much of that with a bat. The whole Morbius thing came along. The antagonist, talking about his motive, to me it just felt a little forced. Where he wanted this cure and then Morbius was like, no, nah, I can't give it to you. And obviously for good reason because of what it's done. And then he somehow figured out a way to obtain this blood for himself. Coming from a crippled man, you know, it was understandable that, you know, he sees Jared Leto, he's doing fine now, he's up, he's looking much more healthier than he's ever been. Obviously there was that motive there, but then he eventually got the blood and he found it upon himself when Morbius got himself locked up and he gave him the blood. Some hell broke loose and they fought a little bit. And after that I felt like the antagonist, the villain's motive was just a little generic. Like, oh, okay, now he's a bad guy just for the sake of being the bad guy. Yeah. So Jared Leto has to stop him because he's the bad guy and he wants to kill everyone. And Jared Leto's character is a good man at heart, you know, yes he's killed some people and he doesn't want to kill any more people and he understands that he's living with this curse that he's given himself and he's trying to fix himself to the point where even towards the end he was willing to kill himself knowing that alright there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to feed off other people's human blood like this blood supply that I've got is going to run out and then some things happen towards the end they fight, the villain dies and then it ends as if, okay, he's still Morbius, he's not going to kill himself because... Didn't really explain why. I may have missed something, or I just didn't really explain why. And all of a sudden he comes up with all these bats. And then his girlfriend just wakes up and he's like, oh, I'm a vampire now, I've got some blood in me. <laughs> Bang, it ends. Then the post credit scenes happen and that's where... A lot of it don't make sense. The first one was with Vulture. You kind of understand what they're doing behind the scenes, but it doesn't make much sense and it feels forced. The executives at Sony or something have just been like, all right, we want to grab Vulture and we want to use him in our movie because in Spider-Man Homecoming, right, there was a post credit scene with him, Vulture and Scorpion possibly teaming up, which was never explored. And then it looks like Sony was just like, all right, we'll take him and use him in our universe. And then there was another post credit scene, which I guess they split up just for the sake of having post credit scenes make people watch the credits. That was when it felt too much. The first post credit scene shows how Michael Keaton's character had basically just gotten transported from the universe and then it just cuts from that to him 
magically just getting his glider and everything somehow finding it in this universe right i don't know what he did how he got out of jail there was so much there's actually so much story to even explore there in any way they want that just was totally just skipped and then somehow met up with morbius and was like oh yep i don't like spider-man and i'm here because of spider-man let's team up that's it <laughs> that just seems so forced it doesn't even work for me. Firstly, Jared Leto, his character in this film, he's portrayed as a good man. He's only killed four people. F actually, in this movie, he's only killed five people. Was it five people? So anyway, Jared Leto's character is portrayed as a good man and there is literally no reason for him wanting to hurt, kill Spider-Man. And throughout the movie, in the trailer, there was a couple references to Spider-Man, which, were actually cut out of the final feature of the film. So therefore, it leaves me with a lot more questions than answers. Yeah, and overall, this whole team up just doesn't seem natural. And I know they're trying to do that for like, setting up future projects and ideas that they have in mind. I'm excited to see that, don't get me wrong, obviously I am, but it just, I don't understand the motive behind Morbius. And maybe it will be revealed and explained later on. And now that's a story summed up. Let's talk about the performances for a bit. Jared Leto's performance, you know, I don't think it was a bad one by far. I think maybe it probably was limited to the writing. The only thing I would say is obviously I just couldn't connect emotionally with that character. The antagonist, Milo, played by Matt Smith, right? Out of the whole entire movie, his performance was the most engaging, the most enjoyable to watch. There was this one particular scene where, you know, where he was dancing, getting ready before he's heading off to a bar when he's enjoying his new powers. And, and then you have the love interest. I, I feel like they could have fleshed out their relationship a bit more. It was a short movie. They had plenty of time to maybe incorporate other scenes of them together in the past, maybe you know, building up their relationship. It was like, oh, okay, there was this female supporting lead, right? And the love interest. And then we were like, oh, is she, are they gonna like, is there anything between them? And there sort of is, and then there was a bit of dialogue between Milo and Morbius about love and you know, the rom-coms and all that. And that kind of gives us the idea, oh, okay, there's something between them, but I guess the chemistry really wasn't there too much. So, I mean, you'd compare that to something that I think has a lot of chemistry between Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man, and you just see the chemistry between both. You can clearly tell which one has more chemistry you know, overall, I'd say, you know, is it worth a watch? Maybe if you've got a bit of time to kill, sure, if you're just curious about the character, but overall, you're not really missing out on much, guys. It doesn't really connect much to any Marvel movies. It's its own, you know, s separate movie. It probably would have been better if they tried not to force some multiverse stuff, although it would be exciting just as a overall, just to see Spider-Man interact with these characters, sure. But look, other than that, we'll see what they do in the future. So overall, yeah, not worth a watch. But look, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to smash the like button. Comment your thoughts down below. You know, let me know what you thought of this movie. Until then, stay safe, guys. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Peace. Overall, this movie, it was okay and it was solid. <clears throat> okay, he's got his vultures. Well, and then there was... Oh, fuck.